joined here with a small little friend. This is one of my three, that's right, I have three now, three male Cynodactylus petrii, the Egyptian sand geckos. Friends, you may recall that two months ago, I shared with you all that I'm starting an exciting new project series. We're calling it Project Sand Geckos, and the playlist is already started up above, so you can follow that first episode, and there'll be a whole series to grow from here. Today, we're doing an update on the animals. Last time, we unboxed them, we set them up in their quarantine bins, and today I wanna go about the routine of showing you how I take care of them, how they're doing, to show you that they are now thriving, they're hydrated, they've put on weight, and they're very interesting to watch and feed. Honestly, friends, I'm impressed by how chill and fun these geckos are. They're actually pretty relaxed. No, I don't handle them much, but I almost don't see a reason why you couldn't. Uh, these guys are actually quite chill and have a really sweet temperament. They don't run around and squirm. I mean, I'm just holding him like this and he's just kind of vibing. He's, he's very calm and not really, uh, at risk of running or, or anything like that. They're really, really cool geckos. And I can't get over the eyes on the petri eyes. It's really quite something. So sorry, I know my, my fingers and hands are all gross and dirty. It's because I've been doing a lot of spray foaming for a very exciting project that involves Sabzi and Basil. So yeah. Let's go ahead now. If you're new here, my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Also, my dog is upstairs barking. His name is Remy and he wants to say hi, I think. Hi, Remy. Now, before we get too far into the video, the first thing we're gonna do is rehouse this little guy. I have been looking far and wide for another male Cynodactylus petrii. Unfortunately, from the first few orders I placed to get new males, I only received two. One time I even tried just ordering a male and I was sent a juvenile female. I'm sure they're not easy to sex when they're younger, so I don't blame the supply or anything. Uh, that being said, they have no obligation to send me the sex I requested. They don't offer that service. They were just so nice to offer me two at the beginning when I placed my first order. My consensus is that most likely the collected animals are, are primarily female for whatever reason, which in some cases can be a good thing. In my case, wanting to have distinct bloodlines and, and as much genetic diversity in my group as possible, it's kind of annoying. I only have two males to breed with all these ladies, a bit problematic. Well, local pet store had a small juvenile male and I just grabbed them. I got so lucky. He's a little bit on the skinny side, but he's gonna put on weight quickly. So let's go ahead now, set him up in a quarantine bin, same as we did in the first episode of the series with all the other animals, and then we'll get into it. All right, everybody, here's a container I've prepared. We also have some wood. Perfecto. Water dish, literally couldn't be easier. All we're gonna do is pour Pour some sand into here, just like so. That should be enough. There we go. Let me get our wood. Put one piece here. Put another piece over here. Got to fill up our water dish, which we'll put over here. Pour some water in. Carefully, oops, that's okay. Not gonna bug the gecko. And now all I have to do is put them in. Okay friends, so here is the new Cynodactylus Petri. Looks like he did a little weird stool there. We're gonna have to watch that to make sure again that he's eating and getting healthy. He is thin, but the risk I'm willing to take because we really, really need some more males here. All right, buddy, there you go. Go in there. Oh, not happy with me with that tail waving. Yeah, 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 you're, you're safe now. All right, we'll get a lid on here. And we'll set him up in a warm area. Okay, everybody, welcome to the reptile room. Again, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away, but there is a very different layout here, as you can see. 
But the last time we started the project, you may recall that I had all the bins on top of the crocodile skinks, which were still in a row. However, now it's a very different layout. So this is how the synodactylus are being kept. I'm being a cheeky bugger and I'm taking advantage of the heat that the Arcadia Jungle Dawn emits to give them a warm gradient and a cool gradient on the opposite side where you can see that each gecko has a water dish. So, ignore that, that is not Pingu's baby. And again, sorry guys, um, dirty fingers with the spray foam. So here they are, most of their hides are closest to the warm side. There's one, these are the Stenodactylus petrii, that's a female. And we have another two in here together. Over here we have two groups of Stenodactylus, Stenodactylus, the elegant geckos, they're all doing wonderfully. So the first thing I usually do in a day is I'll go in and make sure that everybody has water, the temperatures are where they need to be because it actually evaporates pretty quick over here on top of the dart frog enclosures. Uh, with those jungle dons. They get hot, like you can't leave your hand resting on these. So let's go ahead and measure the temperature so you guys can see where it's all at and how I'm having success with the animals. Have a look here. Directly on it, a jungle dawn can hit the 126 degree Fahrenheit range. However, if we are to actually measure the temperatures in these tanks, they're getting to about 86, 88, 92. So, you know, pretty hot on the side that the animals are choosing to be. They like it toasty. That's where the male's sleeping there. And they have options, right? There's other places to hide in the cool side. And again, I have seen them rest on a cooler side if they wanted to out in the open. They're not only doing it because that's the only spot there's a shelter or anything like that. And we can look here. These females have dug a hide. 96 Fahrenheit. And then the cool side, not that cool, but around 85. Now, remember, at night, the temps drop into the low or mid 70s. At... So yeah, you get the idea. So... What we're gonna do now is bring them down. Once a week, I go through and sift all their sand and remove feces. So we'll do that. And then at night, we're gonna feed them all. So we'll do all the Cynodactylus petrii. There's a few more on this side of the room over there. So we'll go, there's one enclosure there, and one enclosure there on top of the garter snakes and all the tarantulas and stuff over there. So yeah, we'll do all the enclosures and then yeah, we'll do the Cynodactylus, Cynodactylus. Really, this process is pretty straightforward. Essentially, just take this up, check the water. Water is full. And then we're going to go in, poop scoop. And, uh, yep, yeah, just going to scoop the sand like so. Give it a bit of a shake and remove the feces. Might not get everything, but obviously, I'm going to try and get as much as we can. I find it's a lot harder with the stenodactylus, stenodactylus, because their poops are a lot smaller. So sometimes they fall through the mesh. But with these guys, usually large enough. Sometimes I just give the sand a little bit of a sweep with my hand to make it easier since these are smaller containers. Obviously I wash my hands after. Awesome. So I usually just scoop the sand back like this. Water dish goes back in. Give the animals a little check here. This enclosure houses two females. Like I said, they're pretty calm. They have a great disposition. As you can see, they've put on a lot of great weight since they first arrived. They just have lean tails. It's just interesting morphology. There you go, my lady. And so there's the odd animal that might be a little more skittish, but uh, such a cool gecko. Love these guys, or girls, I should say. Here you go, girl. And again, they get along. Oh, there's a bit of poop there. I'll clean that up and we'll do the next bin.
right, so now we're gonna do the Stenodactylus, Stenodactylus, which are the elegant geckos. There are two Stenodactylus petrii, one in here and one in here. They're smaller juveniles. And after we've cleaned these out, we're also going to rehouse those animals into their own bin. They're two smaller juveniles. I decided I'm going to move them and keep them together, but separate from the other species. They seem to really get along well together, but I'm finding that the petrii in here is just not putting on weighted like the way I'd like it to. Well, there's one of the tiny little guys. So I want to move him out to be on his own. He's like, he's thriving. He's way less skinny than he used to be, but look how small this guy is. He's one of the tiniest ones that came in that order. So cute. Oh, do we have geckos up here though? Gotta make sure we're not, uh, we don't have any passengers. Nope, we're good. So yeah, there's the little steno. Uh, sorry, little, <laughs> they're all stenos. The petrii. Uh, so you can see, tiny, I'm gonna try and gently, excusez-moi, trying to gently pick you up, friend. Like they're fine, proportionally, like they're good. Hips aren't like showing, but again, I just want to move them out. They're eating, they're doing great. They're gonna get their own home. All the other animals, as you can see, are looking good. Starting to be able to sex some of the babies. You can see that this one is a male, for example. There's some females. Another male here, I believe. Now, the stenodactylus. Stenodactylus are more skittish than the petrii, as you can see. They're kind of the same where if you get them in your hand, they're, they're more chill. But understandably, being this small, you're food for a lot of things. You're definitely more flighty if something's trying to pick you up. But yeah, here's another little juvenile male. Anyways, let's get their water dish out. Ooh, we have some drowned fruit flies in there clean that and replace it for them. You guys are all hanging out. We're gonna set up the new bin here. Exan again, exact same layout. We got some desert sand. It's gonna go on the bottom. Perfect. Now literally all we have to do is get our pieces of wood in there and then uh yeah one more on the cooler side got a little water dish for them there you go and that'll also be kept on the cool side now we can take our little stenodactylus petrii a little, little one they're so small and we will move them into their own bin well there'll be one other animal with them but it's a lot less competition for food than being with a whole little army of senos senos if you ask me all right i'm gonna get in here and do some cleaning excuse me gang excuse mes amis je demande gentiment que vous allez bouger s'il te plaît va te cacher sous ce bois voilà dans cette direction merci merci <laughs> i don't know why i'm speaking french okay everybody's in that corner time to start cleaning here I don't know, maybe I didn't think it through in my head. It seemed like it would be way easier to do this without removing them. Sometimes that's not the case. As you can see by our little adventurer here. Hello friend, please go there. So yeah, so as I was saying, the elegant gecko poops can be a bit harder to pick up. As soon as you shake a little bit too much, they can fall through. So I try not to do that and then we catch them. Put this back here, and then we will move this back here, and then their water, their cool humid hide by Exoterra. We'll go in this corner here, and there we go. Happy little steno stenos. Okay, here is the second bin of stenodactylus, stenodactylus. These are the larger individuals, so you can see that right away the poops that are in here are bigger because we're dealing with larger animals. Oh, somebody's shedding. I'm having the greatest shed there. Might have to separate that one. Here is the other petrii though. So 
So there's another Stenodactylus petrii. And again, this is just a tiny little one. So we're gonna go ahead, similar size to the other one. I'm gonna move them in. Yeah, not very much size difference between the two. Just to show you again. They should be fine together. We'll keep a close eye. Well, I'm not so sure what's going on with this guy if we did just catch him having a bad shed, but he does look thinner. So tonight's feeding night, so what we're gonna do next, I'm gonna spray the enclosure down after we've cleaned it, because I do that also regularly. This guy's like a bit more humidity than you'd think, certainly also at night. But if he isn't hunting and running around eating like the rest, he's gonna get separated. And then we'll make sure he puts better weight on. Okay. Hello, gang. Look at all those lovely geckos. They look great. Now you can see that they're all quite startled. Anyway, time to clean. Stino that was super stuck in a shed. I'm make a little moist cup like this. I'm gently going to collect him. Hey buddy, you're okay. Yeah, he's okay. It's lots of energy, but we'll put him in this cup. And then I'm also just gently gonna do a little spritz like that. And then we'll make sure that he sheds. To be honest, maybe she it seems. Make sure she sheds, and then we'll put her back with her friends. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, out of all the Stenodactylus species I keep, the Stenodactylus Stenodactylus and the Stenodactylus Petrii, which is your favorite and why? Which one you would want to keep? I want to know. You've had the opportunity now to see the animals in good detail. You've watched them eat, you've watched them dig around, you've watched them be handled, you've seen the different diverse colors and patterns exhibited by both species. As always, I'll give your comment a heart, we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks so much, let's get back to the video. All right, so check it out. We got lots of gymnies in here, lots of crickets. We're going to dust them with the Rapashi Calcium Plus, it's like my go-to for everything. Ooh, that was a little bit much, but that's okay. Gentle spin, they're all dusted now. And now it's time to feed. As you can see, it is nighttime in the reptile room. All the <laughs> class frogs are out and about and you'll hear them singing here and there throughout the video. So I apologize if there's a piercing loud little songbird chirp, that's them. Yep, that. Anyway, let's feed the first group of Cynodactylus. Also, our little friend here hasn't got out of their shed completely, but I want them to miss out on the opportunity to eat. So I'm going to place them back in here like so. And honestly, I think they're going to hunt and eat. So we'll see. Let's see how it goes now. When feeding them, I usually remove their hides because I want everybody running around eating. I don't want... Any of the crickets really hiding from them, because especially right now, we're not really concerned about them having to work for their food. We just want everybody to get a good amount of eating done. So sure, we'll leave the water dish, where everything else goes, and let's drop some crickets in. Yep, that's how they react pretty fast. <laughs> the feast has begun. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Hey, now. There's so many crickets, you, you don't have to do that. You need to get your own. Ay, ay, ay. As you can see, our little friend here, who's shedding, is eager. Seems to have zero issues. Doing a bit of hunting there. Which makes me happy. Hey! I guess that could be a smart tactic on the cricket's end. And there you 
you go, everybody. Just like that, the feast is almost done. It looks like there's one cricket left in there. So we'll go ahead now, put everybody's hides back. There we go. Now I'm just gonna give the whole enclosure a tiny little spritz and then we'll move on to the next bin. So yeah, usually every few days, besides them having the, the waters, I also do this. Just like that. And they get a nice spray down. And that should also help that one animal that's having the shedding issues. We do this at night when it's less hot cooler and it just helps with the humidity in there too and they lap it up all right let's do the next steno steno tank all right so these are the larger ones so well, again same thing remove the hardscape and these guys are gonna go nuts because they're larger so they're, they're gonna have a pretty big appetite compared to the wee ones we were just feeding hi everybody this is one of the thinner guys i was a bit concerned about just watch closely make sure that one in particular is eating all right go for it little guy ah, another one got it there's lots of crickets though go for it grab one so close you got it nice there we go More crickets incoming. As always, friends, we're gonna take a quick moment in today's video to thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. Thank you so much, everybody, for your additional support there. Your viewership, your comments, your thumbs up mean the world to me. But many of you ask how you can support Reptiliatus and the animals further. If you're looking for an opportunity to become part of a close-knit community, have a direct line of communication with me, all sorts of perks and sneak peeks on a coming projects, exciting news, trips, you name it, then Patreon might be an additional option for you. For as little as $2 a month, you can become a channel patron and unlock a whole skew of perks. And as always, becoming a new channel patron means that you get an in-video shout out. So since last week's video, we're thanking our newest channel patron, who is Lori. Thank you so much for becoming a new Reptiliatus channel patron. I look forward to conversing with you more there on the platform. Thanks everybody for your consideration. We'll have some great chats. All right, here are my larger Stenodactylus. This is one of the females. The male is over here. Or it might be the one that's under there. There's one under this rock. And then my largest female, the OG female, is all the way up here. So let's go ahead now, drop in some food and spray them down. I'm gonna do the spray first because I don't want all the calcium being rinsed off the crickets when they go in. All right, time to drop some crickets in. Unfortunately, that egg that was here last time ended up being a dud. I checked it and it was dried up and hollow on the inside. Really sucks. I think I'm gonna add more sand down here to make it thicker, uh, give them a better laying opportunity. Otherwise, I'm not really sure why we're not getting eggs yet. I'm gonna have to talk to Fadia and see what it might be, but hopefully we'll crack the code soon. 
Can't wait to set everybody that's in quarantine up into enclosures like this. It's going to be so awesome. Right on. All right, let's do this Stenodactylus petrii, Egyptian sand geckos next. Okay, everybody, so for this Stenodactylus petrii, we're gonna do large or like medium-sized crickets, as well as some smaller superworms. These aren't quite as large as most of them would normally be. You can see they're smaller. So pick a few, and each gecko can have one or so, maybe two, depending if they Seem to need it or not. Now we'll do a gentle swoosh with the calcium. We're ready to feed. So our first gecko here is a lovely male. I really like this animal. Great, and as you can see, he's put on a good amount of weight. Let's see if he wants a superworm now. All right, little buddy, here you go. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Wow, isn't that impressive? What a cool gecko. Again, those eyes, they're truly out of this world. All right, perfect, let's move on. Here is a beautiful female, madame. Oh, here she comes. Wow, look at her. See, they got some bite force. They do have some bite force. Impressive. Very happy. Okay, next up is the juvenile male that just arrived. Again, he is kind of looking skinny, so I don't want to overdo it with a big meal. We're going to offer this guy crickets, something without too, too much chitin. Although those soup worms aren't terrible, I just don't want him to take too big of a meal and risk him throwing up or anything like that while we don't know what his situation is health-wise. All right, everybody, fingers crossed, our little friend eats. Yes, buddy, go for it. Oh, come on. You got it. I'll send it back to you. Need a good meal. These crickets were just got loaded with some spaghetti, or sorry, some uh, butternut squash, so as well as a high calcium cricket diet. You got this little dude, come on. Oh, he's got it. Ah, uh, might automatize the leg though. Hopefully he's got the whole thing and not just the back leg. Oh, he's got it, good. Oh, hey, he's got it. Keep crunching, dude. Okay. Let's move on. I don't want to overdo it. I'm sure we'll be able to offer him something again soon. All right. Here are the two little ones we separated. For these, we're going to offer some mealworms. Let's see what they think. Hello, little buddy. There you go. Oh my gosh, look at this one rushing over. Oh, thief! Thief! Ew, there's a hair in there. Okay. Hey, 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 no sharing in that sense. I'll give you your own mealworm. Just hold on. Here you go. You can have that one all to yourself. There you go, buddy. <laughs> As you can see, they're doing good in their new setup. Nothing to stress about. They'll be chunky by next episode, I'm sure. Let's move on. Here's a nice looking male. 
You're not hungry, buddy? You can always just leave one in there with him. Oh, there we go. It's like a weird wake-up call. He's like, oh, food. Okay, you sure. All right, let's put one more in. Awesome. All right, we'll let him eat that on his own terms. Are you hungry? Some of them don't like the superworms. All of them like the crickets, usually. Very good. I'll throw one more cricket in and then we'll carry on. Yeah, the nice thing about the Petri eye is because they got bigger, they can eat a lot more different food options. Uh, some of my females enjoy silkworms. Most of them don't, but they can eat the supers, the mealworms, the waxworms. I haven't tried them with tiny hornworms yet. They love adult crickets. They don't have to eat tiny little one fourth inch crickets, which is very helpful. Nice. So there's a lot of great qualities that come with these ones. Yeah. I wonder where the second one is. Might be in the same hide. Or this one. There you are. Hello. I wonder if these geckos would actually eat on my hand. That might be ambitious. But I'm very curious if they would do it. Because again, they're just so calm. I wouldn't put it past them. I really, really wouldn't. All right, let's see. Would you eat on my hand? No way. <laughs> I love it. Good job, girl. Good job. See, these are just the best little tiny geckos. They're small. They don't take up too much room. They're relaxed. They're rewarding. They're so much fun. That's right. They're so much fun. Okay, everybody. And last but not least, we have these two hooligans. Beautiful girls. We'll see if they want to eat some superworms too. I'm sure they will. Drop one in for this girl. Just gonna grab it. Oh, yep, they got some bite for us. Very good. All right, I'm going to put their hide back. The other one didn't eat, so what I'm going to do is put a few crickets in, in case that's what she'd prefer feeding on. We'll see what happens. I think she'll probably eat some of these at some point. Anyways, they eat relatively often. I feed them two times a week, sometimes three times a week. But as you can see, they eat pretty well. Oh, here we go. There we go. She's getting her food. It's weird. Sometimes they just zone out and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's food. Ooh, you can see all the juice that they've been eating, the squash. Nice and gut loaded. Well, my friends, there we go. As you can see, the project is going well. A few more months of this, I think, and we'll be set to put them into the new enclosures. Uh, the only thing we have to look at now is whether or not to do a winter cooling. I'll explain further in a moment. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching the second episode of the Project San Gecko series. Things are getting exciting. The animals are putting on good weight. We're gonna keep a close eye on those four geckos. There was the, well, it's 
even five. The new male, Stenodactylus petrii, we want to keep a close eye on him, make sure he puts on weight. The two Stenodactylus Stenodactylus that were a bit thinner, the one that was in the stuck shed being one of them. And then, of course, the two small uh, male Stenodactylus petrii that we isolated in their own bin. I have no doubts all the animals are going to do great, but of course it's important to separate them, keep a close eye, and that's all part of the quarantine process. For the rest of the animals, rest assured, they're not going to be staying in those bins. Now that they've put on a lot of good weight since we first got them here, they're going to be going into large naturalistic vivaria. We're gonna deck it out, they're gonna have lots of sand to dig in, some cool scapes, kind of like those senos I have in the Nano Exoterra. So it's gonna be exciting times ahead. We're gonna need to be looking at setting them up into their little breeding groups. And beyond this, I need to be looking into brumation. The reason for that is, well, there isn't a whole lot of information out there on how to keep these animals in captivity. They're fairly new and Bet your bottom dollar that most of them in the trade right now are well caught, which is one of the reasons why I started the project. Now, I've actually lived in the Middle East for a year of my life, and I can tell you that winters there do get pretty cold. And from the only care sheet I've found online on keeping these animals that seem to have some thorough and thought out information, it's advised that you put them through a winter dormancy or cooling prior to reproducing them. So I'm thinking the next step is to put them through some sort of cooling. We'll remove them from the heat, keep them a bit cooler, and then we'll bump the heat up in a few months, and that's when they'll go into future enclosures. So the next update should be interesting. I don't know if we'll go over the brumation process maybe, and then also set up their tanks so they're ready for them to move into afterwards but it's gonna be an awesome project. Just to be clear, the priority right now isn't breeding the animals. In fact, the last thing I'd wanna do is put thin animals through any sort of cooling where they're having to depend on any sort of fat reserves. There's a fungus gnat trying to get in my face. Rest assured, I'll be documenting it all, sharing it all with you, and I hope you'll follow along and enjoy. Another question I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think about me creating some Project Sand Geckos merch? If you haven't already seen the Project Mini Dragon designs, they should be down here below the video. Fun way to support the project. And if it's something you think I should do, maybe look into making a Cynodactylus Cynodactylus design and a Petria design, or should I combine both species on one shirt design? I wanna know your thoughts, let me know. I'll leave it at that. I think this update's pretty solid. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns down below. If you haven't seen the first episode yet, what are you doing? The playlist is up above here. And I can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming video. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. And again, I thank you so much for watching and supporting. Bye.